so in this last video let's go ahead and set our render settings and then we can just go ahead and render and then I'll come back when the render is finished and we'll set the lights and save our image so let's go over here to our render globals make sure that we're going to render here with fry render click our open environment settings to make sure that we don't have our sun checked I just set the width and height here to 15 by 1125 and I left the aspect ratio on here so that when I change this it'll automatically change the height to match um, just gonna leave it for a single frame so so it's gonna be a still and in the ignition I'm just gonna export the RCS and execute fry render for the path here this just exports the RCS to wherever you set the path so that you could you know launch fry render automatic or um outside of my and import the RCS and render it that way but from now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and render from within inside Maya once I hit the render tab so let's go ahead and click accept close this bring up our render window and hit render and as you can see it's exporting all the geometry to fry render and that was actually pretty fast because the scene's still pretty much you know low res geometry the higher or the more geometry that you actually have in your scene, the longer it'll take to bring all those polygon meshes or geometry into Fry or to start Fry. But since our scene was low, it didn't really take too long. And as you can see, the image has actually already come up. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this render. And then when it's finished, I'll go ahead and come back and show you how to adjust the lights and save out our image. Okay, now that I'm back, we can go ahead and, as you can see, the render has taken pretty much all of the noise out of the image here. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop the, the render to where I want it now because I'm pretty happy with this. So let's just click the stop render button here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and move some of the stuff out of the way so that we can see our image while I adjust the lights. So just, you know, grab it where the arrows are here. And just drag this over so we can get a bigger viewport here and that should be good now like I said earlier the f-stop will actually give you a higher number will actually give you a darker image so if we set this at say you know 100 which would was the default you can see that this over here on the right is going to be a very very dark image so typically I just go ahead and say turn this up to like 650 and then we get a a basic good light standard here my operator I'll just go ahead and turn this you know to the linear tone mapping which it tends to give us some very soft shadows for post processing you also have a you know a brightness control here so you can just keep you know clicking until it just you know gets bright and bright and bright and bright and if we have to say 500 it's going to really brighten the image or 100 it'll really brighten the image same with the contrast and the saturation you know you can turn those up and it's going to really turn the color saturation completely up you also have a lens effect control here where you can you know take the vignetting which will like say if we add 100 here it really like focuses in on what we're rendering. I'm just going to actually turn it to zero and turn it completely off. You can also add a bloom effect, which you can see it'll like sort of glare it or add like a environment fog to it. And the glare here, if we turn this on, let's say turn this to 100, you can see that it's really going to blow the image out here. Same with this one too. So I'm just going to turn those back to zero. the environment mapping here is really for like HDRI usage and since we didn't really use one here or you know image for the background here I'm not really going to explain to you what those do but th I'll cover those whenever we go to render an interior so let's go ahead and move this back over a little bit so that we can bring our light mixer tab up here and I'll show you what we have actually set up here if we go ahead and turn these okay turn these all the way down just leave this master it's say like 38 and a half percent you can see that there's no lights here now what we did with those light mixer setups is we can control the indi 
the light intensity independently here whenever I go to move these sliders. So this would be one, two, three, four, and five. This would be a white light. This is our yellow light. This is another white light. This is another yellow white light. And then this is the effect light as you can see here. And if I just start moving these, we can adjust them to where we want to, you know, adjust our lights and have our lights set up the way we want it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and move this one up. Leave that where it is. Bring these down a little bit here. Move this one up a little more. Move this one down. I just want to try to get at least a, a glare up here in the right hand corner. And I'm looking up here in the right hand corner while I go ahead and adjust these. That's okay. Add a little more glare in the glass there. Let's go to brighten the overall. Uh, that's too much. Sit right there should be fine. Pull this up a little bit. Now I just want to go ahead and add a little bit of yellow here in the image. So let's go ahead and select this one and just drag it. You can add a little bit of yellow there and a little bit in the little bit of yellow in the background pull this back down and to bring this image into here all I want to do is hit the sync tone mapping or you can use the short shortcut which is control space so I'll just go ahead and click this bring the image in here let it let it update it's gonna take a minute And as you can see, it has updated our image here. And I'm fairly happy with this render, and this looks pretty good. So now let's say that I want to go ahead and save this image out to my director or, you know, my desktop. All I want to do is either click the 8-bit here, click the 16-bit, or click the HDR. This will allow us to save the image as an HDR image or a 16-bit image, which is, you know, typically your PNG, TIFF, and and the other TIFF, the 8-bit image here, which will be your JPEGs, your TGA, your bump, your PNG, or or an 8-bit TIFF. So we'll just go ahead and save this as an 8-bit image and click our desktop, put it on our fry output here, save it as say you know a target so that we can have an alpha channel, so we can take this into After Effects and do some more adjustment, but for this I'm just going to go ahead and save this as a JPEG and we'll say jelly beans rendered and go ahead and click save and then I'll save your your JPEG to the director that you wanted um, that's about it for this tutorial uh, I, I'm going to add a bonus lesson too to show you uh, how to take and render out the RCS file so that you can then just go ahead and bring that into Fry Render. Um, but before I go I want to give a big thank you to Erwin Loison for simulating the jelly beans into the jelly bean jar here. Also Chima and John who do the development for Fry Render. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.